it was really, really scary. Like because he just would just lose it. And I can understand when you when you've been a top player like Roy Keane was, one of the very best. In his head, he can't he can't understand why us players at Aston Villa make mis- like certain mistakes. He, he just doesn't compute with him. Like, how can you not pass from there to there? Like, he, he just can't see it. But I remember this one particular game we played against QPR. We lost 2-1 um, down there. And um, he had us in the change room. Paul Lambert kind of just stepped to the side and Roy started talking. And honestly, I, it was a night game. I promise you, all the lights in the building, the, the, everywhere, the, all the families that we used to wait outside had gone because he was in the change room for two hours and he just went off for about two hours. But he went from talking about um, the Lucas A drinks that people drink, players getting too many massages, um, people doing yoga. Um, ha- like someone, I think Ron Vlar had like a knee or an ankle injury or oh, shin splints or something. And he's like, how, could, how can a player be out for that long with shin splints? Like, it, it makes it honestly. And he just went scan around the room picking faults. And no one really wanted to catch eye contact with him because the moment you made eye contact with him, he was going for you as well. So he was like, oh, and you. And everyone just sat there. I always felt like he, not that he struggled, but he found it incredibly difficult when he was playing with players that weren't up to the level of what he expects. Now, we used to do training sessions at Aston Villa and a couple of simple passes that people would misplace, he'd lose his mind. He'd stop the session, he'd be screaming. And it's whether he can deal with that. If he could deal with that and obviously lower the, not the expectation, but the standards, you'd have to say. And that's no disrespect because he's mm. one of the best there ever do it. I think if he does that, I think he could be great. But again, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether, I mean, if your time was his last club as a manager, and that's 2011 he left. Mm. That's a long time ago. And football, you think about the, the evolution of football, it changes all the time. But, but, I, remember, I remember Roy, Roy Keane going off on one, um, QPR away. Had a go at Joe Cole. I'm thinking Joe Cole, legend. Had a go at him, right. He got a can of Red Bull, picked it up and threw it in the shower. He's gone, Red Bull? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Do the science. Do the science. You see, mate, he went ballistic at a Red Bull. We were all there, like, looking at him like, what's going on here? And, and, and after the game, everyone was like, done a bit of research and he was like, you should drink Red Bull before a game. He come out and said he used to drink Red Bull before yeah. a game. Red Bull gives you wings. But he would like his mate's got the Red Bull and threw it off the shower. Up, you know? Started like going off on like and these bars, these bars that you've got here, you know, energy bars. You don't need them. You don't need them. If you saw Roy Key now, right? If, <laughs> yeah. he, if he would you speak? Was it you? I didn't. I didn't like him. Did you not? Nah, no, no. Did you get on with him? I thought he was quite. What did you do? If he came in, if he come walking in there now and he's doing the next show, I'd blank him. Would you? And he, yeah. What about who said? Hey, Gabby. I'd say, uh, leave really it out, catch. Roy. Which was... <laughs> I think, you know what I didn't like about Roy? was I felt that he was very, um... Bit of a bully, mate. Was it, yeah? Yeah, and um, players stuck up to him. He didn't like it. No. There was a couple of players in um, in our team stuck up to him. No, and names? then he left. Names, any names? <sighs> Fabian Delph stuck up for himself right, okay. against him. Um, I stuck up for myself against him. What happened? Tell me, tell me what happened. So this is what happened, right? We had, we'd done this training session, right, where, like, um, the whole team's doing a shooting session, right? Crossing, shooting, sh- crossing and shooting yeah, yeah. session. You had to play the ball into midfield, pass it to him, pass it to him, play it out wide, get in the box. You had one shot every three, four minutes. Yeah. You know, like, players are getting cold, blah, blah, blah. The standard was awful. Players missing the ball, the cross was going out of play. <laughs> You're heading the ball with your shoulder. You know, just, like, horrendous. Yeah. And, like, the gaffer's called us in Paul Lambert and yeah. he's gone, um... Lad, it's not good enough, you know. Come on, come on, come on. I was one of the captains. Yeah. I've gone, but Gaffer, to be honest, we're getting cold. Roy's gone. So there's no, so basically, for those, when you're doing this, you then once you've shot, you then go to the back, back to the of the queue, queue mate. right? And then you've got to wait again until yes. you until you, and that can take Quick a while. To get sitting in the post office, yeah. that was <laughs> us to get a shot. Anyway, Roy um, Roy Keane's like, I've got our Gaffer, you know. Everyone's getting a bit cold, blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. Roy Keane's gone, cold, cold. Do you want another warm up? Do you all want another warm up? I've got. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the gaffer. So I sort of mugged him like that. Yeah, so I'm not yeah. talking to you. Like, relax. I'm talking yeah. to the gaffer. Mate, give me that stare. Did he right? He gave me the stare that he gave like Vieira in the right. tunnel. Yeah. Anyway, next day, um, he left. <laughs> I think he left did, because did you get he thought. Rid of him? You... No, no. I think he left because he probably thought, you know what? I'm going to do something to one of the players that I'm going to regret, and let me leave. I don't need this job. Right. Coaching's probably not for me. Right. It wasn't right for the for the team we had, the squad of players we had, mate. We weren't great at that time. Right. So he he needed to be around better players. Gotcha. So so he just loses his head, mate. Even when we done like passing to someone, um, a coach on the edge of the box. Yeah. Set you for a shot. Up, yeah, one touch. Yeah. If you miss a target, he'd be like, hit the target, hit the target. And some of the players will bite back him and say, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> I I'm, not, I'm trying to go for the corners. So you're going to miss the target now and then. So, like, I don't think he was right for, like, the group of players we had. Right. But... But his standards, of course, were... Of course, but, like, you're not going to get players that are going to be at that standard, mate. Mm.
Villa, how do they get back into this, Gary? Well, they've got to start touching the ball. I mean, we looked at um, Gabriel Agbonle, who's a centre forward, and I, th I had to check. I thought that's not right. That There's eight touches in the first half. It's the lowest touches of any player this season in the Premier League, and two of them are kickoffs. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm concerned a little bit that you've got to get. Well, look, he's got. He's not got to touch anywhere near the 18-yard box. <laughs> so they've got to get the ball into the centre forward. They've got to get hold of the ball somehow because I mean, you've absolutely no chance if you don't get your centre forward involved in the game. I mean, eight touches and two of them being the kickoff is <laughs> worrying.